everybody, it is Mr. Matt. We are safely locked inside the Packard Branch Library. Um, we hope you are all doing well and staying safe and staying clean and not getting sick. Um, we are closed to the public for quite some time. We don't know exactly when we'll reopen, but we are going to start bringing you some story times on the Facebook page. And our whole library system will be posting some to YouTube that we'll be sharing links for on our Facebook page. And we're going to do that for however long that we are having to live like this. Um, just try to make your day a little bit brighter. Um, just to let you know, we are still doing checkout service. You can go onto our online catalog on our website and place holds on items. And then they'll be sent here. And we still pick them up from our front door. But we have a book cart sitting outside. And you can also use our apps, you know, Hoopla and Cloud Library and RB Digital. Plus, we have lots of databases on our website like Tumble Books that has storybooks and chapter books as well for people of all ages. So give us a call at 334-625-4886 if you need help with that. Um, you can also just send me a message via the Packard Branch Library Facebook page and any updates will get posted there as things progress. So without further ado, it is time for story time to start. And we're gonna start the way we always do, um, whether I'm at the Packard Elementary School reading to your kids there or to the kids here at the library for story time. So let's do hello, friends. We're gonna learn some sign language. So this is the sign for hello. We're gonna hello, get our friends, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Point to your wrist, it's the sign for time. We're all used to our watches. It's time to say hello. Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Give yourself a round of applause wherever you are as I applaud myself. You may hear a little croaky. That's just to do with the pollen. So as always during story times, I will take a sip of water or tea. Today it is water with a little bit of lime juice added for flavor. And I'll be doing that throughout story times as we do them online, as well as in person when those resume. So right now we have to stay away from each other. We can't you know, give a handshake. We can't give a hug. We can only wave. And it's kind of sad. But we're going to do a couple of stories about hugs because everyone likes a hug, or at least most people do. So our first story is one the kids at school have heard and the one the kids at the library have heard, but maybe we can get some new kids who've never heard this story to enjoy it today. This is one of my favorite new books. It's Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug by Jonathan Stutzman and illustrated by Jay Fleck. And it is published by Chronicle Books. Now I'm going to come a little bit closer so that you can see the pages better. So don't get scared. I'm just getting a little bit closer there. And this is Tiny, and he has a very tiny T-Rex. Now we're going to see why the impossible hug is a big problem for him. First, we're going to say hello to Tiny. We're going to say hello, Tiny. And this is his friend, Pointy. We're going to say hello to Pointy. Hello, Pointy. Now we're going to start. Hello, Pointy. Are you okay? Pointy says, no. Today I feel sad. I do not want to play. And that is why Tiny T-Rex must give Pointy the impossible hug. Now on this first page we have a list of things that make someone feel better. How to make a friend feel better. Number one, cake. Number two, smiles. Number three, hugs. Number four, tacos. And number five, jokes. But this book is about number three, hugs. There's Tiny. Tiny says, I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Each day I am growing taller, but my arms 
are still tiny. Is he growing taller? No, he's not. He's just standing on a big pile of books. Tiny says, hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me. But I will try anyway, because Pointy needs me. He says, where is my father? I will ask him for advice. Now, every time he sees a family member, we're going to say hello with, with uh, Tiny. Tiny says, hello, father. So you at home say, hello, father. Good job. Where was Tiny standing? Yeah, he was on his father's head. Father says, Rexes are thinkers, not huggers. Perhaps instead of hugs, mathematics might be the answer to your problem. Well, Tiny thinks about that and says, Pointy does not like math. Math will only make Pointy feel worth. So Tiny goes to see his Auntie Junip. What is Auntie Junip doing? Yeah, she's doing yoga. Maybe you've been doing that uh, during the break. He says, hello, Auntie Junip. I have a problem. I must learn how to hug, but my arms are too tiny. Auntie Junip says, I have found that balance is the key to every problem. Balance and freshly squeezed cucumber juice. Does cucumber juice sound good to you? I'm not sure how Tiny feels about it. Tiny says, that is disgusting. I will ask my mother for help instead. But on his way to his mother, something terrible happens. I have fallen, and now I am lost. I do not think I will find my mother in here. Where do you think he is? What do you see? There's a pencil and a pair of scissors. Oh, he's in his mother's desk drawer. She opens it up and finds Tiny. He pops out and says, hello, mother. Mother says, it's okay if you can't hug, Tiny. You are good at many other things. You are kind and creative and braver than most. You are tiny, but your heart is big. But tiny thinks about that. He says, I cannot hug with my heart, mother. I must learn to hug with my arms. So he goes to find his sister and his brother. He says, hello, sister. Hello, brother. Please help me. Hugging is very difficult. They say, we'd love to help, Tiny. To do the impossible, you must plan and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Tiny says, thank you, Trixie and Rory. That is good advice. He says, I will plan my strategy. Perhaps I'll shoot myself out of a cannon toward Pointy, or maybe climb a ladder and jump down to Pointy, or ride a unicycle up a ramp to leap onto Pointy, or maybe I can dangle myself from a Bartosaurus down to Pointy, or maybe parachute down to Pointy, or dig a tunnel up and hug Pointy on the belly. Tiny says, I will get stronger. I'll do setups and boxing and jump rope. I will practice very hard. I will practice my hugs on everything. Bouncy balls books, flowers, and, oh, what's that? 
Yep, it's an ice cream cone. And what happens when you hug an ice cream cone? You get ice cream all over you. That's not good. What is that? Yep, that is a cactus. And what does a cactus have? Spikes. What did Tiny do? He hugged the cactus. He said, I will not practice on that anymore. Tiny said, I am almost ready. I will practice one more time. When I am done, I will find my friend. And then he sees this. He says, this tree is very big, like pointy. I will hug it. Do you think that's a tree? Mm, I don't think so. It's a pterodactyl. This is not a tree. I have made a mistake. Please help. But then Tiny looks around and thinks, from up here, everything looks tiny. Like me, I could hug anything I wanted. But then things go wrong again. Now I am falling. I should not have let go. Now I will never find Pointy. When he says, hello, Tiny. Tiny says, I am here to make you feel better. I have practiced very hard and hugged many things. My arms are still tiny and my hugs are still tiny. But I will do my very best because you are my very best friend. So Tiny takes a leap and hops onto Pointy's head and gives him a tiny hug. And what's Pointy doing now? He's smiling. He says, thank you, Tiny. That was the biggest hug ever. And that's the end of Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug by Jonathan Stutzman with illustrations by Jay Black. I love that book. It is one of my favorite new books and I love the idea of doing everything you can to try to make someone feel better. And that's kind of what we're doing here, trying to make you feel better while you're stuck at home. So, um, oh, and by the way, parents, um, we have the new Tiny T-Rex and the very, very dark, the brand new Tiny T-Rex sequel um, by the same creative team available at the library. You can call us and place it on hold and check it out via our front porch pickup service. And as I often do, I'm taking a break for water. And we'll move on to our next story. Now, a lot of you heard of Pig the Pug. He is a, a very bad dog who uh, teaches lots of lessons by not doing what Pig does. Well, his author and illustrator is Aaron Blaby. He's from Australia. He has a bunch of other books, too. And this next one is about another creature who, like Pointy, needs a hug. And this creature is Pointy, too. But he's not a dinosaur. He's a creature that lives today. Can you think of a Pointy creature that lives today? There are several of them. Um, hedgehogs have points, and they're very cute, have points, little tiny points. And then you have rhinoceros with big horns, kind of a point. And then some people, kids will talk about like a, a shark has his teeth, it's kind of pointy. But a particular pointy creature in this book that wants a hug is a porcupine. And a porcupine can have quills that can grow as long as two feet, and they're very, very sharp. 
so you can see what the problem is in our next book which is i need a hug by aaron blake and porcupine needs a hug so we're going to see if he gets one And you can see Porcupine is already asking if you out there will give him a hug, but he's very pointy. So what, what is that? That's a bunny, bunny rabbit. It's a rabbit named Lou. Porcupine says, I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Lou? Lou says, what? With those spikes? Get away from me, shoo! What is that? It's not a deer. It looks kind of like a deer. It has antlers like a deer, which you can tell by its snout that it's a moose. It's a moose named Ken. Porcupine says, I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Ken? Ken says, help, it's that prickly thing at it again. He hops away, like the bunny did. What is that? That's a bear. It's a bear named Joe. Porcupine says, I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Joe? Joe says, cuddle you? I won't. No, 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 no. Porcupine says, No one will hug me. That's not very kind. He notices something. He says, But hey, wait a minute. You've all changed your mind. And what are they doing? They're running back toward Porcupine. But then they just keep running past Porcupine. Why are they running past Porcupine? Because they saw a, what's that? It's a snake! Snake comes up to Porcupine and says, Gosh, all I did was ask for a kiss. Okay, so, what does Porcupine want? He wants a hug. What does Snake want? Snake wants a kiss. So Snake looks at Porcupine with a hopeful smile on his face. And Porcupine thinks it over. Do you think they're going to get a kiss and a hug? Well, I think Snake got his kiss. And Porcupine is definitely getting a hug. And Snake says, well, isn't this lovely? And Porcupine says, yes. How about this. And that's the end of I Need a Hug by Aaron Blavey. It's published by Scholastic. And we have lots of Aaron Blavey books at the library, so check on our catalog, check them out. Place holds on them or give us a call. And we'll get some checked out to you for our front porch pickup service. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this story time. We'll be posting some on a regular basis throughout this time where we're all kind of locked away from each other. But uh, we hope you're doing well, stay healthy and stay safe, and give us a call if we can help you in any way with our online services or the front porch pickup or any general questions you might have. Um, Ms. Janine and I are at the library 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, while all this is going on. It is time for our goodbye song, so let's put our goodbye hands up. Remember, it's goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's
it's time to say goodbye. Good job, everybody. Have a great day. We will see you again soon with some more stories.